Today we're going to talk about resistor capacitor circuits, known as RC circuits for short. You might ask, what is an RC circuit? Well, an RC circuit is really basically just a circuit with a resistor and a capacitor. Now there are two basic types of RC circuits. One has a resistor connected to the input voltage and a capacitor going to ground. The other has a capacitor connected to the input voltage and the resistor going to ground. You might wonder, why do we care about RC circuits? Well, RC circuits have two main uses. First of all, they can be used in timing applications. RC circuits are nice for timing because they are inexpensive. Unfortunately, they are imprecise because their timing can vary based on fluctuations in temperature and other factors. We're going to focus on the timing of RC circuits in this presentation. RC circuits can also be used in filters because they allow certain frequencies to pass through, but they block out other frequencies. We're going to talk about filter circuits in a separate presentation. So how do RC circuits actually work? Well, the electricity flows through the resistor and charges up the capacitor. This is kind of similar to filling up a barrel full of water. Both the size of the hose and the size of the barrel determine how long it takes to fill up the barrel. Imagine that you had a large hose and a small barrel. That barrel will fill up pretty quickly. But if you had a small hose and a large barrel, it's going to take a long time to fill that barrel up. In an RC circuit, the resistor is like the hose and the capacitor is like the barrel. The electricity flows through the resistor to fill up the capacitor. So a small resistor is like a large hose. It lets electricity pass through easily. And a small capacitor is like a small barrel. It can't store very much. So a small resistor quickly charges up a small capacitor, but a large resistor slowly charges up a large capacitor. Now we've been talking about capacitors charging slowly and charging quickly, so you might wonder how long does it take to fully charge a capacitor? Well, it turns out that the answer to that question is actually kind of tricky, so let's see what's going on. Imagine that you had an RC circuit and the input voltage looks like what's shown in red here. So initially it starts off at zero and then at some point it jumps up to a new value. The capacitor voltage would look something like this. It would start charging quickly, but then the closer it got to the input voltage, the slower it would charge. So since it keeps going slower and slower, the closer it gets, in theory, it would never actually reach the, the input voltage. So in theory, it would take infinitely long to fully charge that capacitor. So if it takes forever for an RC circuit to fully charge, then how can we measure the charge time? How can one circuit charge faster than another if they all take forever, right? Well, we can't measure how long it takes for a circuit to fully charge, but we can measure how long it takes for the circuit to charge up to a certain percentage of the input voltage. In particular, we're interested in how long it takes to charge to 63.2% of the final value. So if we look at the capacitor voltage and we see how long it takes to get up to 63.2% of the input, that amount of time is called tau. So tau is the time it takes the capacitor to charge to 63.2% of its input. Tau is also called the RC time constant. And tau is defined just as the resistor value times the capacitor value where the units are in seconds. Since tau is r times c, we can choose the time constant that we want by choosing our resistor and capacitor values. So if we choose a small resistor and a small capacitor, then we end up with a relatively small time constant. And if we choose a large resistor and a large capacitor, then our time constant is longer. Now we said that during the first time constant, 
the capacitor charges to 63.2% of the input value. But what happens after that? Well, during each subsequent time constant, the capacitor charges 63.2% of the remainder between where it is and the input value. So after one time constant, it gets to 63.2%. After two time constants, it gets to 86.5%. After three time constants, it gets to 95%. And it keeps going. So after four, it's 98.2. And after five, it's 99.3% of the way to the final value. Now we said that in theory, the capacitor will never fully charge to the input value, but after five time constants, the capacitor value is really, really close to the input voltage. And in fact, it's so close that it's pretty hard to tell the difference between where it is and, and the input voltage. So we say that after five time constants, the capacitor is approximately fully charged. So let's briefly review what we've learned about RC circuits. An RC circuit consists of a resistor and a capacitor. The time constant tau is defined as R times C. It takes tau seconds for a capacitor to charge to 63.2% of the input voltage. And five time constants is approximately the amount of time that it takes for the capacitor to fully charge.